Okay, so this is part three of our training series. Uh, unfortunately, OBS froze on me, and uh, the last few seconds of part two, uh, the audio was off, uh, but uh, we didn't do much because I caught that uh, pretty early on. Uh, so the parts where I, wa I wasn't saying anything, I just moved, uh, added a few uh, vertices around here so that I can make uh, this part, this area a little bit uneven and uh, more organic, uh, as you can see. So let's start using the array to duplicate this uh, so that we have a really long uh, sewer so so what tunnel so for the uh, for this part here for the walls uh, that's easy because uh, there is nothing uh, too different about uh, this side and this side so they will tile uh, very easily so if we add uh, the array uh, we want this to be on the y-axis so we can change change uh, the x offset to zero and then the y offset to one uh, but uh, because we rotated this uh, we rotated this uh, mesh uh, we need to apply a scale and rotation uh, so that uh, we have the correct axis and I think we should do the same for this and now let me first hide this for a second if we tried using the array modifier on this Okay, so it seems to work correctly, but uh, in case you move, let's say we add a few polygons here. If you moved uh, the top part, uh, the, the front side, and uh, it's not the same, uh, so that the, the last uh, edge loop here is not exactly uh, the same edge loop as you have here, you're going to run into this issue where you have gaps in your mesh. So to fix to fix that, I just select uh, this edge loop, the last edge loop, shift D to duplicate it along uh, the Y axis, and then select this loop, and then this loop, I right click, bridge, edge loops. Uh, that should fix uh, the issue, but uh, you're going to run into this uh, shading issue that I had as well in my video. but. Uh, uh, that's because uh, this area is a bit too sharp, so you can select uh, that vertex. Make sure you're selecting uh, the vertex uh, that match exactly. So this and uh, that, and uh, we let, uh, make sure you also have proportional editing turned on. Let's look at this so that we don't have, so that we make sure we don't have any kind of clipping or gaps added. Then move this to in the x axis, in the y axis. Sorry, z axis. And uh, you can see now we are reducing that clipping, that sharp part. So now after doing that, you can come in and uh, do whatever you want here uh, to make this side look a bit different from this side. Uh, but make sure you don't move uh, these polygons here. So to make sure you don't move them, you can select them and then hide them. So now if you turn on proportional editing, you can move all the other vertices, but uh, those vertices will still remain intact let me first increase the carry count and see. so you can see there will be they'll stay in their position uh, but uh, you, you may run into again that issue of uh, this point of uh, shading artifacts around here uh, but uh, it shouldn't be too big of a problem when you start uh, texturing so let's first hide them and uh, bring these a little bit down maybe start moving individual that says uh, maybe with the proportional editing on, but uh, reduce it reduce the follow. So if we unhide, we still don't have any gaps in our array. So I can extend this for as much as I want, and I will not I won't have any issues. And uh, so again, if you want to make it curve uh, like what we had in the in the video or in my main project. I so I only carved uh, the walls. I didn't bother with the uh, with the sewer because I didn't. My camera wasn't going to go that far. Uh, but uh, if yours is going to go that far, you can just add a curve. Add a curve. Sorry, you add a shift a curve. Use a bezier curve, and uh, we can scale it up, rotate it ninety degrees. Uh, go to edit mode and uh, hit V to bring up this set handle types and ch change them to automatic so that we can straighten up uh, the curve and uh, this is going to be the part uh, where the 
channel is straight and then we can extrude uh, this part and bend it off like that select this control point and turn off proportion editing now i have that curve so to make this follow the curve i just uh, the first thing you have to do is uh, make sure the curve is in the same position as your mesh then so just select this mesh shift s uh, cursor to select it and then shift s select the curve and then uh, shift s selection to cursor so that you can move uh, the curve to the position of to the position of uh, your mesh uh, but uh, the problem is that uh, our curve is also going further below our mesh so what i'm going to do is uh, select this handle point so that our pivot point is at that handle point so i'll do shift s uh, cursor to select it so that it snaps to that to that uh, point and then origin to 3d cursor so that our pivot point for our curve is at uh, the 3d cursor and again i'll do the same step here and snap it back to position i still want this part to be straight uh, so i will uh, let me see move these polygons around until i have a straight path like that and now i can select uh, the mesh add uh, the curve and add the card modifier modifier and then select the curve as you as you uh, object now the mesh may go in different areas but uh, play around with the different axis because uh, the deformation axis will be different uh, depending on the rotation of your object and the rotation of your curve object so let's move this on the y-axis and uh, the reason why we snapped uh, the object to the position of the uh, of the curve of the of the curve is that uh, if you have this somewhere like here it's going to be very difficult for you to, to, to know uh, the right deformation axis so this helps you I uh, know what uh, the right deformation axis is going to be so now we can increase the array count and uh, you can see what we have so I, I will unhide this I will also do the same and since our origin is, is at the same origin same spot as our curve I simply now just need to add uh, the curve and uh, make sure I have it selected so I'll just pick it like that and uh, basically we are good to go now we can we can now increase the array count so that our curve our tunnel bends as well uh, but uh, we are getting in, running into is this issue where the curve is is running where the tunnel is running in out of polygons uh, so it's becoming a little bit jagged there so i'll just go to edit mode and add a few extra loops here to make uh, that curve look smooth so i'll call this just create a new folder here I'll call this tutorial tunnel. and uh, let me move my camera into position so if you have the camera selected you can use ctrl alt z to snap it at your view area so now we can just position our camera like that uh let's see what what are we going to do in the next tutorial uh so in the next tutorial we'll do this manhole as because you can see we have different sections uh, we have a module without the manhole and then another one with a manhole with a manhole uh that way if we wanted a manhole anywhere we can just shift d let me make sure I'm moving the right thing, selecting the right thing. Okay, so Blender has crashed. Uh, so we'll start uh, the next tutorial from there. Thank you.